Okay, okay. Thank you very much. It's so nice being here. I see a lot of uh, handsome faces and beautiful girls. Okay. Woo. And uh, I'm so tired, you know. Yeah. I'm so, so tired. I've been doing a lot of sports lately. Uh, excuse me. What, what's your favorite type of sports, please? Basketball. Oh, that's nice for a girl. Well, my favorite type of sport is running. My favorite type of sport is running. Especially running from responsibilities. <laughs> you know, as a young man, it's not easy to have responsibilities, you know. I bet you each and everyone sitting here must have tried to run away from one responsibility or the other this week. Maybe you had to pay your light bills and now you're living in darkness. <laughs> Maybe you had to buy your girlfriend a ticket to come to this show and you didn't. And now she's sitting with someone else. <laughs> and, uh, well, Responsibilities are what, uh, that's, that's the stuff that really holds society together. I mean, you ought to be responsible. But there are a group of people that, I mean, those people take their responsibility very, very serious. You know them? Jehovah Witnesses. <laughs> no, no, I have nothing against them, but... <laughs> I have nothing against them, but you know, I like them because if they come to preach to you, you will have to listen to them. Like it or not. Late or not. In fact, I met a Jehovah Witness on the eve of my 20th birthday, and by the time he finished preaching, I was 24. I mean, in the neighborhood where I live in, right, there's only one thing that can make a full grown man run in, into his house, shut the door and hide when Jehovah's Witnesses are approaching. <laughs> not even the police, no. Not even B, uh, AC, Gendarmerie, Mifiri, no. Jehovah Witnesses. Even, even the joint security, you see. Where I live in the neighborhood, we have a code for Jehovah's Witnesses. When you're chilling outside and you hear someone shouting, <coughs> Jeho! Jeho! You know they are coming. <laughs> you know it's time for you to run inside the house, shut the door, switch off your TV and your radio, and most importantly, put your phone on vibration. <laughs> I, I don't know how to get your numbers. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe through divine intervention. <laughs> you know, everybody runs on heights and they step into a neighborhood and there's no living soul in sight. And they'll be like, Brother John, Sister Jonah, has the rapture already occurred here? <laughs> Then, coincidentally, some chickens will just be passing around. But you think those guys will live? No. They have a responsibility. They will be there till the end. So those chickens will just pass and... <sighs> oh, I'll be giving you a life. <laughs> I hope you know it's the Christmas season. You will die soon. Trust me, this is your last chance. Uh, I, I think I think there's a reason why God do, uh, God I mean God doesn't talk to He can't talk to human beings nowadays because we have become so complicated, very 
very, very complicated. You know, God cannot talk to us directly now. If we have, if we would have been in the past, a lot of th- like in the Old Testament, a lot of things wouldn't have happened because things have changed. Imagine God calls Abraham. Abraham was there. Abraham had no TV, no iPod, no DVD. He was compelled to move. Now God calls Tambe. Tambe is at home sitting and watching TV. And he hears a voice. Tambe. Tambe. Now who? It is I, your Lord, you offer an Omega, the beginning and the end. Oh, God. How far? <laughs> Tamber, Tamber, I want you to leave your house, leave your family, leave everything, your job, and follow me to a land I will show you. I mean, just follow me. The land is very far and you have to trek. God, excuse me. No vex. I think the gods must be crazy. Tambe, Tambe. No, God, I'm serious. Look at my neighbor. He's a Jehovah Witness. Please use him. <laughs> no, Tambe. I will give you many promises. Like what? <laughs> Look outside. I will give you a lot of children as plenty as the stars in the sky. <laughs> yes, Tambe. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you for this opportunity. Thousands of children. Yes, Tambe. Now you go pay their fees. Hmm? Tambe, Tambe. This is the last chance. So what is your answer? Mm-mm. What? Mm-mm. What? You know the year? Mm-mm. And and what what you must you, you have to agree with me that religion has paved the way for too much trouble in the world in the world right now. A lot of things are going bad because of religion. People are fighting over unknown religions and people are trying to hide the wrong things in religion. Now we've got people killing and kidnapping people because of Allah. Terrorists. Thank you. I used to, I used to hate terrorists, but now I love them. <laughs> Why? Because they have never ever captured the Cameroonian. <laughs> We Camerounians are just too much. Have you ever switched on your TV and seen them? Terrorists capture Cameroonians. Terrorists pleads for government to take him back. <laughs> just imagine a plane from Douala, you know, and so happens that terrorists are in that plane. I mean, just when they take off, everybody, everybody, get down! Everybody get down. We are terrorists. I am Abdul and that is Mustafa and we will kidnap you and your government will have to pay. We will give you forms to fill out. You. Uh, I say everybody down. Everybody head down. One back. So you. What country are you from? Excuse me. Australia. Mustafa. Give him the Australian form to fill. Your government will pay for you to be released. Okay. <laughs> you. What country are you from? What country? Ah, France. Mustafa, man, don't enjoy you. <laughs> give him the form. Give him the form. Give him the form. French form. Give him. You. Which country? United States. Mustafa. Mustafa. Man, don't reach you. Man, don't reach. <laughs> give him. Give him. Obama will pay. Okay. You. What country? Cameroon. Ay! Mustafa. See Ban Market. <laughs> Just too much. Uh, 
that's the way our government has made us look like just like second class citizens and it's because of poverty you know as a country do, do we remember the hippie initiative pardon thank you can somebody clap for that guy thank you I won't fool you I've been poor too so poor that I was also under the hippie initiative <laughs> as highly indebted poor comedian <laughs> and it gets scary when you want to get married because maybe just maybe you and your wife will be enlisted under the hippie initiative too as highly indebted poor couple <laughs> And all these things happen because I blame one, I mean, just one group of people. Chinese. <laughs> Our country has been so open to them that we don't even know who they are anymore. Cameroon is the only country that exports original cocoa, original coffee, original timber, and we import Chinese phones. <laughs> Chinese shoes. Even Chinese schools. And, seriously, Never, there's nothing that they do that ever seriously I think Chinese people build the Titanic <laughs> no it's true how can a ship sail for one time and just get bad it, it happens with our phones the Chinese phones okay just imagine this uh, company that uh, produces electronics in China they have a board meeting the boss comes in Li Wong J Li Wong J you were supposed to produce computers can you give me a review? Well, boss, uh, out of the 20,000 computers, 500, 500 of them were bad, so uh, we have to recycle them. What? Recy recycle? Is he a father who is giving money for this company? Send them to Cameroon. Send, send them. Send them to Cameroon. Very fast. Very fast. In fact, let me say it clear during this board meeting. Any electronic watch, phone, shoe, anything that gets bad, please send to Cameroon. I've been on TV for quite a long time, and if you ask me, the state of Cameroonian television, I won't be able to justify. Have you ever watched National Geographic? Oh my God. The way, once in a while, please try to pay your light bills, okay? Okay. You know, when, when, when you talk about an animal, what, even if the animal is so wild, you just, you're fascinated. You know, they talk about an animal and you're like, oh my God, is that the python? Oh, it's so lovely. You know, they talk about baboons. <coughs> you hear commentary like, that is Zara the baboon. She was brought in captivity from poachers and now in the wildlife reserve. She weighs 200 pounds and has two kids. She is 14 years old and feeds mostly on shrubs and small seeds. You know, you, if you feel it and it's like you are in that jungle with that baboon. Now, when it's time for our common journalists to do the same, that is a baboon. Her name is Lucy. <laughs> the baboon is walking. It's walking. The baboon has stopped. <laughs> the baboon is drinking water. The baboon is eating. Oh, the baboon is sleeping. Ah, the baboon is awake. <laughs> Even the way football matches are being transmitted is different. You want super sport? Hello, Martinez. Hello, Yuan. 
We are here for the Classico of the day, and it's Real Madrid versus FC Barcelona. You can see Messi warming up, and Barcelona fans, please make some noise. Barcelona fans. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Those are who pay their light views. Tico, what is United in Tico? You know, it, it, that's Messi. He needs just 30 more goals in order for him to be the top goals, the highest ever goal scorer. You know, he's been playing all his career in FC Barcelona. From the age of seven, he was in the La Masia. That is the football school of FC Barcelona. Now, the kickoff started. Messi with the ball. Oh, Pepe intercepts. You know, it's like you are there playing. It's like you are putting on your own boots. Now, Amadou Aijo Stadium. The same commentators we knew 20 years ago. Thank you. Hello, from the check here. Yes, Jean Lambert. How did you sleep? Fine, just backache. All I can say is Ashia. Thank you. Did you press it this morning? Small. Now we are there at the Amaijo Aiton Stadium with uh, this indomitable Lions playing against the Spanish national team. We can see our captain Samuel Ito, who is from Anzil Mashkashkash Klaxkash Klax. Till date, I haven't been able to pronounce that name. Mashkash Kash Kalaj, Jean Lambert, do you know the team? We, 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 Mashkash Kash Kalaj. <laughs> Eto, with the ball, the passes to Landry Gomo. Landry Gomo, who plays for. Who plays for. Who plays for. Jean Lambert Nang, do you know the club in which plays for? No. <laughs> you see, most of these players don't even have clubs. And the ones who have clubs don't even play regularly. No doubt, they even qualify for the Nations Cup. <laughs> Let me pose this question, right? Mila and Eto, who is the best? Who is the best? <laughs> Did you see the way Eto introduced his teammates during the last match when Song was still playing? Uh, Mr. Le Ministre, this is uh, Kameni he plays for Espanyol. He's taking the Golden Globes for the best goalkeeper in 2006 in, in Spain. Uh, this is uh, Asue Koto, plays for Tottenham, he just played the Champions League. Uh, this is uh, Nicolas Kulu, Marcel, also played the Champions League. Uh, this is uh, Rigo Besson. <laughs> Mr. Le Ministre, demand the mess. <laughs> And <laughs> now I, I hear uh, uh, Song has been uh, nominated the manager of the national team. Yeah. I wish he were the coach. I mean, I want him to be the coach so that you have his payback. <laughs> First press conference. My colleagues, as you can see, I have been nominated coach. You know what that means? When I don't die. <laughs> Kulu, are you coming late? Knee down beside it too. <laughs> that, that end. Come in, you too. Pick a pin beside Lanjingwe Mude. I have to instill discipline in this team. <laughs> well, this is February, right? What's going to happen? Valentine's Day. <laughs> Valentine's Day. That day accountable for 75% of high blood cases in males. <laughs> Amen. Now, it's, it's, I mean, you have to buy your girlfriend gifts. That is, you know, I, I can't lie to you. You need to buy her gifts. Maybe you're thinking, since you bought her gifts for this, uh, a ticket for this show, that's a Valentine's, mm -mm. that's what we call Avangu. You are just tasting her. On that day itself, you will need to take her out, 
buy her some good shoes take her swimming <laughs> I mean you understand what I'm saying last Valentine's Day girl made me and said Hansel do you want to be my Valentine's and I foolishly said yes and she said okay these are the things you have to fulfill she gave me a list I know please clap for them please No, that's how we are in our family, you know. I met, yeah, yeah, I met my dad and said, listen, dad, I have a joke. And I promise you it's going to be funny and you're going to laugh. Say, well, Hansel, if the joke is funny, I will laugh. If it's not funny, you will cry. <laughs> that is how open we are. You, you know, <laughs> you know, so she made me and gave me her list body lotion 5,000 lipstick 5,000 roll on 5,000 and to add salt to injury bathing soap 25,000 and I asked her what do you want to wash do you want to wash away your sins no you you you, to, be, to be sincere, right? You be girls are the most beautiful girls I've ever come across. Well, having said that, they are also the most dangerous. Just a, because, because people make it so difficult for us to approach you. You know, it's so difficult. I mean, even aliens are scared of approaching you. Just imagine, the, just imagine an alien prince from Mars decides to take a wife. And unfortunately decides to come to Moliko. <laughs> you know, the, the, their spaceship land in Moliko in front of that crown. And the alien prince comes with his advisor and the advisor is like prince do you see that girl she's beautiful she'll make a good wife and the prince is like advisor are you sure are you sure okay hello beautiful girl are you Which kind of trouble it is? <laughs> no, 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 please. That's how they are. You need to call to them. You need to, I mean, that's just the first try. Go again. Okay. Oh. <laughs> it's a pet thing. <laughs> you again. You again. If I catch you here, I'll make sure the talons on my heels go through that your thick head. Which can wahala be this? Mission about, mission about. I would rather die alone. You know, most of us have girlfriends, but we are scared. Of, some, 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 of, some boys are scared of moving with their girlfriends during the day. They call them the night girls. You just call and they know they know they are ugly. Just imagine you have an ugly girlfriend and she gets missing. I need to report that to the police station. You walk into the police station and the police officer is like, excuse me, sir. Or oh, what is the problem? Well, officer, I want to report the case of my missing girlfriend. Okay. Uh, when did she leave home? She left home yesterday. Left home yesterday. Uh, what was she putting on? What dress? Excuse me. Kaba. 
what uh, what was her hairstyle? Really? Motobo. Uh, finally, uh, does she resemble any celebrity? I mean, does she resemble any celebrity so that we can uh, take from her? Really? You mean your girlfriend? Wow, that's nice. Excuse me? Oh. T. Maya. Uh, excuse me, one last sincere question. Are you sure if you find this girl, you want her back? Really? Nice choice. I knew it was a mistake the first time. Okay. Well, you know, it, it's not easy to do music. Um, please give it up for all those who performed here. Please. It's not easy to be a musician, you know. I like music. I believe music is singing, right? Thank you. Thank you. Uh, if you want a difference, please go to school. <laughs> you realize that most people make noise in a concert, hardly ever pay. <laughs> I don't know what I mean. I know what I'm saying. You know, there's a time when if you're singing music, you ought to sing. Okay? You ought to sing. Don't talk. <laughs> sing. One person gives of this. Elizabeth Deke. <laughs> now, thank you. Now, j let's do this. Let's do this, okay? Let's clap. <laughs> let's follow. Uh -huh. Oh Lord, thank you. We say thank you. Oh Lord, thank you. We say thank you. You know, that's music, right? Keep clapping, keep clapping. Now, Elizabeth, take care. Some of you think that going to church is the only thing. I met with my pastor. How do you know? He visited me after church. I said I should visit him. Why? I don't know. Forces of evil in this church. Oh Lord, thank you. We say thank you. Don't believe in your pastors. For they are corrupted. It's really Pastor Chris. As for Timmy Joshua, it's a sad case. Oh Lord, thank you. You know. Okay, okay. And you know, songs are very, very descriptive because they describe the place in which you are and your status in life. Just imagine you're sitting at the uh, uh, chariot hotel you're eating, right? The song they play there is different. Play song like, Levels don't change now, the no feet call me again, cause I'm 10 over 10. You know, you're 10 over 10, and you're eating in Delhi and making the fucking 10 over 10. You go to places like uh, Eta Palace, right? Play some songs like, It's a sign of victory. You know, you, know, you have conquered poverty. <laughs> Mm. Now, for those of you, and I say those of you who go to Achumbu, <laughs> puff up and beans. <laughs> Mommy, uh, puff up 100 beans, 50 pack 50. <laughs> On top of that, they play a song. <clears throat> Change my story, Jehovah. Change my story. I believe there's one person who has a voice for music and he knows it Mandela of Moliko.
Ah, sir. Now wait I swear to God. Mandela walks into a church and decides to join the church choir. Pastor, I want to sing. The pastor is like, well, Mandela, that's a good, that's a good initiative, but uh, what part do you want to sing? I mean, we have tenor, we have alto. I want to sing in our first part, though. Uh, Mandela, please, first part is for those who have high voices, like, hallelujah. You know the Yama voice. Not the first part, that. Hallelujah. No, Mandela, say, ah. No, it's, ah. Wait a bit of difference. <laughs> Finally, finally, I was watching the t- news, uh, the TV when I saw BET Awards honoring uh, musicians from uh, Africa. We had uh, a lot of African com- uh, musicians on the floor. We had um, uh, Arafat, we had Fali Pupa, The Bench, Two Face. Ah, you watched too. That's a bar. <laughs> you know, and and the, it's not easy to be a musician, especially on the red carpet, you know. They interviewed Baggy W and Nato C. Nato C is the only MC with. The only MC with. And he proved it. He spoke fluent English. I'm here to collect an award and I hope I win. You know. Then things became bad when they met with the bench. Excuse me, the bench. How do you see this award? Oh, shit! And we mean cocolet, cocolet. Hmm. You know. The, uh, oh shit! Oh shit! Uh, uh, we, we, we'll get back to you very soon after you've taken your medication. Uh, now we are with uh, Nju Nju he Nju. Oh Njore 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 from Cameroon. Jore, how do you... Banu, 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 Banu. Banu, Banu. And Jore, what do you mean? I say Banu, 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 America. Yeah, hey, Banu. Well, uh, we'll leave you for a while. Oh, that's two face, two face. Nothing did happen. No, follow me. Nothing, nothing. Two face will get back to... Now, wait. Now, me, why you see for red carpet? Now, me, why you went to this girl, you know, seen Jore? Jore, hey, Manu two face! Manu two face, Manu, Manu! Ladies and gentlemen, it's been Hansel. I love you all. Thank you for coming to me. Right now, televiewers, we are with the man of the day, Hansel. Good evening, Hansel. Good evening. You look colorful. Thank you. You're a guy in pink. I love you, dress. Right? Thank you. So what are you wearing tonight? Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm putting on um, Extravaganza 2010 collection again. And uh, this tie is from Giorgio Armani. And, uh, you know, I just I was dressed to kill today. You've been preparing about the show, so have you, and you delivered the show tonight, so did you come, have you accomplished what you wanted to accomplish tonight? Uh, not, frankly, not yet, because I don't think I've, this is just what we call the avant I don't think I've reached the pinnacle of my glory. This is uh, just um, warming up, giving the fans the taste of Hansel, and uh, trust me, it gets better and better each day. Do you know something? I think um, some comedians would say, who do you think you are? Who do you think you are to host a show for 45 minutes? So what can you say to them? Well, there's one, one answer. I am Hansel, and they are not. <laughs> You're so funny. So um, what can you say to the viewers out there? Well, I'm grateful for Homebreeze coming to the show. I'm grateful for Meet Hansel inviting Homebreeze too to the show. And... Uh, <laughs> A wonderful cooperation and uh, I want to say I'm gonna keep it coming this is not the end it's just the beginning special thank you to my parents for being there I mean it meant a lot to me my family was there I want to thank my friends my high TV family my friends and everyone who made it possible for the show to be realized thank you